Good afternoon from Space Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. You're looking at a view of Falcon 9. A while back, I did a tour of my LEGO Launch Complex 39A. Since then, that pad has unfortunately been dismantled to build a bigger, larger Falcon 9 and a launch pad based off of Slick 40. So let's take a tour of the rocket and the launch pad. Let's start off with Falcon 9. Falcon 9 is a two-stage bi-propellant launch vehicle. The first stage is this black cylinder and everything below it. The second stage is this gray part and the payload fairings uh, is the top kind of egg looking part that uh, you can see. Or uh, let's take a more in-depth look at Falcon 9. So we're first going to start off with the first stage of Falcon 9. Now, uh, for some scale, here is a LEGO minifigure uh, next to the first stage of Falcon 9. And also, for more scale, here is a composition notebook, and uh, here is it next to Falcon 9. Now let's take a, a close look at uh, the first stage. The first stage of Falcon 9 has 9 Merlin 1D engines. Uh, and uh, they're arranged a formation called an octaweb with eight on the outside and one in the middle. Now, one detail many people may not realize about the octaweb is that the middle engine is actually uh, lower than the other eight. And this is to uh, increase the gimbal range of that one engine because it's used for the landing burn. Now here uh, we have the landing legs. There are four of them one on each side, and they can deploy, which I'll show you uh, in a bit. Running along the length of Falcon 9 is the raceway. This raceway transports uh, plumbing and electrical, uh, electrical lines uh, up and down the rocket. And then looking forward, we can see the four grid fins, one on each side, followed by the interstage. Let's take a closer look inside the interstage. So this is inside the interstage. You can see a translucent piece off to the right, um, or transparent piece off to the right there, and that is to represent uh, the camera uh, inside the interstage that we so commonly see during the SpaceX webcasts. And here we have a piece that's kind of like sticking up, that is to represent the piston. So next we're going to take a look at what Falcon 9 looks like in its landed configuration. So here we can see Falcodyne in its landed configuration. The four landing legs are deployed and we have a minifigure off to the, uh, off to the lower right for scale. Now coming up top, we have the four deployable grid fins, which you can see are deployed. Some of the challenges I had faced when building and designing this larger Falcon 9 were the landing legs. How to integrate them in a way where they wouldn't protrude too much and the, uh, and the hinges for the landing legs would be sleek and uh, not to ruin the overall shape of the Falcon 9 body. Another challenge were the struts. The struts are actually angled a little bit off-center relative to the landing legs to bring the octaweb or the bottom of Falcon 9 closer to the ground to give it a more realistic perspective relative to real Falcon 9s. A fun little tidbit about Falcon 9 is that the landing legs can actually retract all the way into their closed position. Now this was, uh, now this was achieved by utilizing a clever use of the space inside the landing leg and the stuff that uh, protrude from the uh, rocket to assist in the struts and the, uh, and the hinges for the legs. For example, here we have this part that protrudes right here. This part is part of the overall hinge structure of the landing leg. And as a result, there is a uh, uh, sort of an area here 
this this part can fold into and also there's this part here that sticks out and it folds into this area so it all goes in smoothly without an issue Here we have the upper stage or second stage of Falcon 9. This is the part that takes the payload to orbit. The upper stage is expendable, making Falcon 9 a partially reusable launch vehicle. MVAC is a unique build, and as you can see on the images here, uh, it actually looks pretty cool. And this is the top of the second stage where the payload would be attached to, or the payload and payload fairings would be attached to. One of the hardest parts about Falcon 9 was actually the payload fairings. The payload fairings actually split in half, which was quite hard and difficult to make. As you can see here, this is one half of the payload fairings. And here you can see a size comparison of Falcon 9's fairing halves versus a minifigure on the right and the fairing halves with a payload on the left. Now that we've seen stage two, here's the entire Falcon 9 stack uh, in a horizontal orientation on the transport director. Speaking of transport director, let's take a closer look at the transport director. Welcome to Space Launch Complex 40. The pad is actually so large that I'm actually having a hard time keeping the whole thing uh, in frame. So the overall kind of general understanding or kind of general basics of the what Slick 40 looks like, and Slick stands for Space Launch Complex, uh, what it looks like is that you have the transport erector, which is the large truss, uh, truss structure behind Falcon 9, and then you have the actual launch pad with the pad deluge system, and there's also this building in front of the Falcon 9 that's actually seen in a lot of images released by SpaceX. Now, the Stromback can actually retract. Now, I don't actually have a mechanism like I did on LC39A that can slide and retract it, so it just has to be manually retracted. Now, the lock mechanism is the same as LC39A, in which it is held in place by two locks. From there, the Stromback can retract uh, to almost 180, but I installed a kind of uh, a stopper so that uh, it can, this is the maximum it can retract to. Now, uh, here we have the quote unquote launch clamps, which really just are places where Falcon 9 kind of slides into and it actually holds it in place quite well. Um, and then over here we have the pad deluge system, which sprays water onto Falcon 9 and the launch pad to help, this, to help suppress the sound during launch. In the very front, we have this building. This building uh, is located on the real launch pad as well. I believe it's used to store uh, tools and things that are used to maintain the pad, but inside this one, which if I can get it off, uh, it is used to just store uh, the extra parts for Falcon 9, which are kind of inside uh, the containers and things like that. And here you can see Falcon 9 standing vertically at the launch pad. And an up close view of the how Falcon 9 kind of slides into place at the launch pad. And so that's going to be it for my tour of Space Launch Complex 40 built out of Legos. So if you enjoyed what you watched, uh, leave a like and subscribe and comment what you think I should build next or any ideas or improvements you have for the launch pad. And until next time, I'll see you later.